Lately, it feels like everyone that I run into is asking me for a tip, whether it's a coffee shop, an Uber driver, doctor's appointments. From what I know, tipping is mainly a thing in the United States. A lot of European countries don't do it, but actually, if you are someone who's European and you're planning on visiting the United States, this is the perfect video for you. And honestly, this is the type of video that I wish that someone had said to me when I was like 16, 17, 18, so that I would actually have a good understanding of how tipping works when I pay for something. So nowadays it feels like there are so many different types of jobs that ask for a tip and uh, even this guy. Um, I only accept a uh, card. Okay, uh, would you like to leave a tip? A tip? Yeah. 50 cents. 50 cents? Yeah. You sure? Okay, so tipping is pretty much always going to be for service jobs. It's going to be things like a restaurant server, a barber, people who help you move into your house. And just to be clear, this information is coming from a bunch of different articles. I'll have them linked below if you'd like to read through them. So let's start with the food industry. Restaurant servers, this is I feel like what most of us think of when we think about tipping. I'd go bare minimum of a 15% tip. I pretty much always leave a 20% tip. Now, if you order food to your house, you should be leaving at least a 15% tip. And if it were me, I would start with a bare minimum of a $5 tip. I wouldn't go below that for having food delivered. And then as that goes up, I'd go 15 to 20%. When it comes to transportation, Uber, Lyft, stuff like that, I believe that the lowest option on there is a 15% tip. That's considered to be totally acceptable. This is one of those areas where based on the service that you get, let's say you have an amazing conversation with you or they tell you about a great restaurant spot or some cool places that you could visit, be very generous with them. They're going above and beyond what their actual job is. When I visited Paris about a year ago, we used Uber a lot and it was funny though because in America on Uber, you know, you have to tip. There's no like no tip option. And then there, there actually was the option to not tip. That is one of those big cultural differences. Anyways, we still wanted to be generous and we did leave a tip, even if it's not necessarily part of that greater culture. Now, when it comes to valets, the expectation is that you leave a tip of somewhere between $5 and $10. If you're someone who drives a crazy nice car, like a Bentley or something, probably be a good idea to give just a little bit more than that. Okay, let's quickly move into the beauty industry. When it comes to beauticians, cosmetologists, massage therapists, it's expected that you tip somewhere between 15 and 20%. Now, when it comes to barbershops or hairdressers, in the past, it was kind of more acceptable to leave a tip of just like a dollar or two, but depending on how much you're spending, I would go with, at the very least, a minimum of $5. Now, I try to tip my barber a lot more than that because he could be charging much higher prices than he does, and he doesn't. I'm very thankful for him. He always does a great job. Now, if you're in a big city, unless you're paying $50 for a haircut, then I'd probably be tipping somewhere between $10 and $20. Let me pause you right there. If if you're enjoying this video and you want to see more videos just like it, I need you to hit the subscribe button. I love getting to make videos like this and the only way that I can keep doing that is if you subscribe. Thank you. Now when it comes to hotels, there are a few different people that you should be tipping. For housekeepers, they say that you should tip at least 3 to $5 per day. Now you can choose to do this every single day or you can choose to leave it all at the end of it. If it's a higher end hotel, then you should be tipping about $10 per day. A lot of hotels will have a concierge service, they'll have people that help you bring your bags up to your room and you should try to tip those people as well. And if you're taking the hotel shuttle bus, you should try to tip a few dollars per person who rides the bus with you. Now, if you hire movers to help you move into a house, out of a house, apartment, college dorm room, whatever it is, the expected amount to tip is about 20% of the total moving cost because this is gonna be split up among a bunch of workers who help you out. However, I will say that this is a pretty rare scenario. I mean, you think about how often we're going to restaurants and we're leaving a tip for the server, and we think about how often we're moving houses. It's not that often, do 20% with this one. And the last one on this list, if you're paying someone to pump your gas, you don't have to tip that much, usually one or $2. Now, at the end of the day, when it comes to tipping, it's a really cool opportunity where if you wanna be generous, you can totally be generous. However, here's what I'll caution against. Don't treat it like it's something where, let's say the service doesn't meet your standards, where you just say, you know what? I'm not gonna tip them at all. Instead, try to treat these things like they're the minimum. And when someone goes above and beyond your expectations, you know, be generous with the way that you tip them. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I am so glad that you're here. And it just means the world to me. If you'd like to check out another video, I've got so many videos that I work so hard on on my channel, if you'd like to check those out.